Right, so as promised, we're gonna look at groups. Now, this is a little bit of a messy kind of thing, so apologies for any uh, hard cuts and edits in the video. And also, because it is uh, a potentially confusing area, if, if something doesn't make sense, just chuck us a message, leave a, leave a note in the comments or something, and I'll try to do a follow-up to explain a bit better. So to begin with, I've just got this set up here with a group node, three other nodes and the same thing inside the group node. So nothing super complex. We're just gonna run uh, node copy, node paste. And by that, I mean, I'm gonna basically take the grade node, control C it, control V it. Now we know that the pasting follows my mouse. I'm just clicking places and it's doing what you expect. And it will do the so inside the group as well. So it's nothing too exciting. Let's, let's clean that up quickly. now. Obviously, when we're automating things or when we're trying to run scripts, you can't always guarantee an artist is clicking exactly where you want. So uh, what, what I'll do is I'll replicate that. So I'm gonna grab the blur node here and I'm gonna copy the node. So new node copy. If you look at the help on this function, uh, you know what, let's do it for good form since I had it here. So it'll copy all the selected nodes into a file or the clipboard. When you do control C, you're copying it into the clipboard when you do it like this, you're actually making a file on disk. Obviously I'm on a Windows platform, so hence F drive. <clears throat> if I want to no paste it, you can do exactly the reverse. You can paste it from the clipboard or you can paste it from a file on disk. So I'm gonna paste it from a file on disk. So I'm in my regular node graph. I'm gonna call it the root of my script because it's the first thing and the, the base thing. So in the root, I'm gonna just run this. So I've clicked here followed my mouse, click over here, mashing the left mouse button, same thing. Perfect, nothing controversial about that. If I move into the group here, right, you hear me clicking away madly, it didn't follow the mouse. Now, the fact it followed the mouse in the root is kind of nice, but it's not really a guarantee. You, you, you do need to be um, very explicit because what we could be running is we could have made this best blur rig somehow interactively. So you built it and then you saved it to disk somewhere. And then inside your comp script, you actually just want to open up 10 compers worth of scripts and you want to insert this best blur rig somewhere. You don't want someone to have to open it by hand and put it in. You just want to, you want, want, you want the machine to do the work. So obviously you have to be super explicit at that point. So the first thing is with a group here, with this setup, <clears throat> You can't guarantee anyone's clicked anywhere. So I'll show you the old school way of doing it. Please do not do this. This is just to illustrate the concept. We used to do this by saying begin and end. Begin and end is important. So we would go to the group. So we would be, we'd start off in the root context, the very top level of our comp script and go, all right, find me the group. I'm at the group, great. Let's start working inside the group. So that's the begin statement here. And we'll even look at the help quickly just to reinforce this. So oh, on the begin function, all Python code that follows will be executed in the context of the node. <clears throat> Must be paired with end. That should be in massive flaming blinking capital letters uh, seared into your skull. Um, I'll show you why in a moment. It, it, it is pretty messy if you're not careful, but we'll do this here. All right, so I'm gonna begin in the group. I'm gonna disable the transform and the blur in the group, and then I'm gonna stop working in it. Already, those of you who are more technical are probably going, wait, what? But we'll do that. And um, let's also do the grade as well. All right. So I'm just gonna go grade one. This makes some sense. Run that. Okay. So it's disabled the two nodes inside the group as I expected, and it's also disabled the grade outside of the group. This is okay, but it's a little bit strange because technically this should not have worked. And I have memories from, I don't know, it may have been Nuke 9, where this would just cause you all sorts of pain. Because really, this node here, you started working inside the, the group node. And then every statement after it, this one, this one, this one up to the end, should be being executed in the context of the group node. Now, why this is confusing to me 
is because there's no such thing as the group one node inside the group one node. So I would have expected this to blow up. There's some magic plumbing within, I believe, Nuke 11 and up, maybe even, uh, maybe even 10 and up. Maybe I'm misremembering, but this is possibly a bit wacky because some of your statements here may not work. So if you have problems in your script, let me, um, let me, well, I'll change it from a node paste to a nuke create node, right? So we're just gonna use this as a separate piece of code. So I'm gonna create a roto paint, another, because it's green, in panel equals false, just to clear. So I'm gonna create a roto paint. So when I execute that, fine, it's the roto paints out here, great. Uh, if I have the blur selected, it'll make my roto paint, you know, Nothing, nothing too exciting. We're expecting that. So let's say I wanted to do some of these disable work uh, inside the group. So we begin, we disable transform one and blur one. Great. If we were to create the roto paint, it would be inside the group context. Okay, so far so good. Nothing makes, nothing is a problem. And then we would end and then we would disable grade one. What happens if you have this as a script here and I'll deliberately cause an error? Nuke to node potato. There is no potato node in here. So let's uh, let's run this lot. Oh, did I? Cripes. This demonstrates one of the problems. I have even just now forgotten. Uh, I will probably rewind this video. I don't even remember if I ended it. Uh, we can check that actually. Yeah, I didn't end this group. Uh, I didn't end doing this, so I should run that. Otherwise, everything's in a weird state, because if you imagine, from a nuke standpoint, which group is it active in? I don't actually remember. I, I half uh, recall there is a way to actually get this information, but the easier thing is to not have it happen to you. And the reason is because of this. If I run this code, wait, did that not break? Oh, that returns it. Um, let me just pause this and try something out. Okay, so let's, let's try that again. I should have done this. Okay, so <clears throat> I have an error in my script. Now, it flamed out at this line, but I'm gonna create my rotor paint node again. You'll see it's stuck inside group one. So if you're ad hoc doing stuff, or if your script breaks halfway through, then it's in a really weird state. Now, the first thing I'm gonna mention is, if you're in this, first thing to do is find out what script caused it, find that script and fix the damn thing. Second thing is, if you desperately need to get out of this, you can do this, nuke root. So remember I mentioned that this guy is the root. You can begin here. You can start your work back in the root context, and then you'll be back to some normal kind of stuff here. Now, I have vivid memories of never figuring out why new scripts get corrupted or other scripts don't work or undo stacks are all broken. So at this point, I'd consider everything I'm doing at this point to be really, really strange. So I'm gonna pause the video, save the script, and then come back with everything set up to be clean. The reason I mention it is because this here is really finicky, really messy, and I'll show you a better way to do it but it also illustrates where things can go wrong. You always need to clean up after yourself when doing stuff like this, lest things go strange. So let me pause and I'll be back. Righto, so now we're back. What I'm gonna suggest is you should always, 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 always use what we call a context manager. It also makes your life easier. So all this garbage here, let me, um, let me compress that. So you remember the problem, I'm going to change this to look like this, with, and that's the magic word, with. With, instead of doing this whole line here, that's all we're doing. Within, you can read this as, within the context of this, do this stuff, all right? So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna deliberately get rid of this one because we know it's an error, and then it's gonna reset this. Leave the roto paints in there. All right, and put um, where are we? The grade one. Yeah, there you go. Let's grab him. <clears throat> All right. So this is our new code, and it's actually a lot more readable as well. 
So with this group, do some work inside the group and then do some work outside the group. It's actually really obvious what you're you're expressing compared to this was like, I, I, I guess you would need to be able to spot these two to understand where the group begins and ends. So let's try this. Does exactly what the same, exactly the same thing, but it's actually a lot safer because uh, let's reset this again. I'm going to put my deliberate broken line inside here. So this represents a script that I've written that I've deliberately put garbage in. Now, if you remember, the old problem was that you couldn't tell what um, Nuke thought you were still working in. Is it the root or is it the uh, the group? All right. So I'm going to do this again. So it blows up exactly the same way. So we're just going to create the roto paint node. See how the roto paint nodes in the group? Uh, sorry, in the root again. <clears throat> so what this with uh, context manager is doing is it's actually doing this begin and end, but it's actually doing um, this as well. So I'll write it out in long form. This is not the exact Python, but it's doing this kind of stuff. So it begins. Uh, this is actual Python, but yeah. You know. And not my name. Anything blows up kind of that. So it's going to start the process. It's going to try do these things here, all right? Except if anything blows up, it will run the end command for you. It's actually a little bit more elegant than that. So look up Python context managers. Um, specifically, this the begin and end is not what it's doing. There's actually a um, enter. No. Nah. Forget. It's an enter or an exit call. I forget what it's what it specifically is, but that is really how you should be working with groups at all times. Ideally, it it's simpler, it's cleaner, it's more obvious, and it also protects you from your own problems. Like you can guarantee, unless something really weird happens, that anything that breaks here, you're not going to be in an unclean state. Anything that happens inside here uh, will will happen inside here. It, it kind of guarantees it for you. So I'll always use the with stuff. Um, if you're more interested, look up the Python with statement or the with keyword actually. You should be able to find out more of what that means. You will have seen that potentially in other contexts like this. Open, open file name as file handle, do stuff. All right, so this is the same concept. I want to open the file. So I, let me, maybe I want to um, dump all the read node file paths. So with open file as a reference to the file, do stuff here is just basically go through every read node, paste the file, I'm uh, not paste the file, get the file path from the file knob and then write it into a file and then we're done. This handles the opening of the file and importantly, closing of the file because you know, it's the same kind of concept. You want to clean up after yourself and ideally let the machine deal with all the entry and exit problems for you. So that's the with context handler. The other thing i uh, probably mention as well is how to actually reference stuff. Now back on the, oh God, this is getting a bit messy, but um, yeah, let's just add a whole bunch more space to it. All right, so on the node from oh, a few videos back, we did the nuke selected node. So let's deliberately this nuke uh, select nuke dot um, selected node. All right. So we've got rotor paint for here. Now I'm just going to assign that so we can hold on to it with nuke two node group one. All right. And then we're just going to select grade one. So I'm just going to do this. Do, do, do. Why? I'm using garbage variables just because it's quick. All right. So this is uh, how I would do stuff personally. Like I want this to be the selected node and I want this to be the selected node in the group. I've been really explicit about it. So let's just have a look. X is, wait, why are you not defined? There you go. X is a roto paint because I've got roto paint selected here and Y 
these are great because I grow grades like them. So nothing too crazy there. But we can actually reference this another way. And it's that nuke two node pattern we've been using. So nuke dot two node roto paint four. All right, so that will give us roto paint four. Um, trust me on that one. Uh, I should probably have picked grade one actually. So in this case, grade one, I am 100% certain that this, because I've used the context manager and I haven't got any weird situation, this grade one here is this grade one. If I wanted to get this grade one, you can do it this way. Group one dot grade one. So you can use this dot kind of notation to reference it. So we'll, we'll get that one and we'll uh, disable it again. Say boom. There you go. So I've got it. So you can reference it directly using this. So if you know the name of the group, you can sort of just follow that logically. And also, same way, you can use this full name. So dot full name. name. And it will tell you its full name. I would actually seriously recommend if you're working with anything, just get used to using the full name. Like, I don't believe there's any real disadvantage to using it because if it's in, um, so uh, this guy here, X, so we'll just get X's full name, X dot full name, name, Roto Paint 4. If I took the Roto Paint 4, um, brought it inside here, uh, does that work? No, um, that's not going to work for reasons. Uh, I'll, I'll go into that. That this is this will be part of the error management stuff. But suffice to say, using the full name is never a problem, and it gets you out of problems like this where you have two nodes called grade one, and you're not entirely sure what you're going to get. So, if you carry around a script with group one dot grade one, then unless someone does something like change the name of the group then you're still going to be fine. Like this will fail because it cannot possibly find a node called group one dot grade one. But yeah, the, the, these are your usual problems. If, you, if you're using nuke two node and your names are changing, mm, you know, kind of all bets are off. Um, so yeah, that is a, it's a longer than usual talk, but groups, group groups are messy and interesting and annoying, but yeah, groups.